Hello, and welcome or welcome back to the AGF Design Studio channel. My name is Alana. I'm a freelance lettering artist and designer. And today's video is going to be all about using vectors in Adobe Fresco. Adobe Fresco is pretty unique as a digital drawing app because you can use both pixel graphics and vector graphics in the same program. So today we're going to be looking at a few things like brushes, different tricks that you can use using vectors and more. So if you're ready, let's jump in. Let's start with vector brushes in Fresco. Over here in the left-hand corner, you'll see a bunch of different categories. So we've got brushes like our basic brush, nice, pressure sensitive, it's got some nice rounded edges as well, crisp and clean, which is what you're looking for when creating in vector. We've also got these jitter brushes, which you can see range from light to heavy. So vectors are usually known for their slick, clean lines and not a lot of texture or personality. But these jitter brushes, however, add a lot more of that to your line work. These are a great way to add a little bit more if you're using vectors. We also have the manga category. We've got three different options here. These are great for nice thin lines, frame lines, and character designs. And then we've got our outline brushes. So these are great because every stroke that you draw is completely hollowed out. So you've got a complete outline around your line work. So as you can see, there's no fill in the middle and your outline can be recolored independently of the inside. So for example, if I wanted my outline to be red, but I wanted the inside to be black, I can do that very easily. Just like with your pixel brushes in Fresco, your brushes have brush settings. So if I select and go back to my basic category, I've got just a basic round brush. I can go to the bottom left-hand corner here and open up my brush settings. So all of these things can be adjusted and previewed in this little window. I can even make a taper at the beginning. I could add taper at the end if I don't like the roundedness of the brush at either end. I could adjust the pressure sensitivity of this brush. So as you can see, by playing in my brush settings, I've com completely changed this brush and created essentially a new one. But if for whatever reason I wanna go back and change everything back to the default settings, I can open up my brush settings menu again and go all the way to the bottom and hit that reset arrow at the bottom. Another unique feature of using vector brushes. If I've got two intersecting lines like this, if I use the trim strokes feature using my touch shortcut, I can completely chop off any intersecting lines that overlap. So to do that, I'm gonna take my touch shortcut I'm going to pull my button all the way to either side and I'm just going to glide over and trim. So again, this works with any intersecting lines, overlapping lines. You can use this trim strokes feature. This is nice because it gets you a nice clean result so if your lines extend past each other and you don't want them to, you can just clean it up really quickly using that feature. Using vector brushes isn't the only way to use vectors in Adobe Fresco. At the bottom right-hand corner, you have your drawing aids. So you've got things like your circle, square, and polygon. This is great for creating perfect shapes or shapes in any kind of configuration that you can think of. You can do this with your drawing aids and using vector brushes. So I can take my vector brush and trace this circle. So now this will be completely outlined in vector like so. I can also use my fill tool and fill this and it'll be completely vectorized. 
Also, if I just wanna fill the circle right away, I can use my fill tool here and tap. And then you'll see fill layer type as an option pop up. So you have the option between vector and pixel. Selecting vector will obviously keep this as a vector shape. So just keep that in mind. And it's a great way of using vector shapes that you can use in other programs like we'll see soon. This feature also works great with our shapes tool. So here we've got a bunch of different shapes. We've got floral category here. So for example, I can take this and then I can go to my fill tool here at the bottom and I'll be prompted in the same way. Filling this in vector is just one click and is perfectly simple. If you're committed to creating vectors in Adobe Fresco and you know that's exactly what you want, when creating a new layer, you can tap and hold and you'll be prompted to create either a pixel layer or a vector layer. You can select vector layer and be off to the races creating a vector. You'll notice that any vector layer has this blue dot icon at the side of it. That's how you know that you're creating on a vector layer. If you create a pixel layer, you'll see that that icon is different and they look like a series of dots representing the pixels. So that's just a quick way of being able to tell the difference in Adobe Fresco. Did you know that vectors can apply to text as well? You can have any text on your canvas, tap the layer once and hit convert to vector layer. What this allows you to do is treat each of these elements separately and it gives you a flexibility of transformations. So I can take my fill tool and recolor each of these letters if I'd like, just with simple taps. I can also take my transform tool. I can skew and scale this text and use any levels of transformations that I like. Very simply. So, what if I'm using Adobe Fresco and I need a little bit more control? I need to use something like the pen tool, for example. Well, it's easy to send your work from Adobe Fresco straight over to Adobe Illustrator. So let's take a look. I can hit my share button at the top and I can go to open a copy. This will allow me to send it to Illustrator on my iPad or on my desktop. I have it installed on my iPad, so I'm gonna choose that. So you have import options. You can convert all of your layers into separate objects, or you could flatten your layers into a single image. Note that this will make text editable when possible, and flattening will preserve the text appearance. I'm also going to check off import hidden layers, just in case I had any layers toggled off when I sent them over from Fresco. So now I've got each of these pieces of lettering. They're selectable, I can edit them. I can open my layers panel. And because I selected import hidden layers, I can toggle these shapes that I had back on. That's a brush stroke from before. Everything is selectable. I can group these things. I can take these objects, I can recolor them easily. And as you can see, this brush stroke that I had from Fresco is fully expanded, but I can change the color if I'd like and make any other edits that I need. So this is a really great way of using both of these programs together. They have a lot of flexibility, like I said, because Fresco uses vector and pixels. So have any questions about vectors or Adobe Fresco? Let me know in a comment below. Thank you so much for watching this video. Don't forget to like it, share it with a friend, and subscribe to the channel for weekly videos. All right, I'll see you in the next one. Bye.